warning we started with a bit of a bushwhack here. Stay with me, Zach. for a ride with the uh, officer. Let's go, come on. Although being remotely in the interior of Newfoundland, this site had activity from hydro workers and also fish and wildlife enforcement. The officers kept a close eye on this neck of the woods. Before heading out in the meal peg, one of those individuals stumbled upon our campsite and offered to provide us a better view of the ice situation. Okay? Yeah, it's um, not, up not. here, like we're closer to south coast and usually the snow will go faster around here. To, I mean, this has been a weird winter, right? But the ice, like Cowie Lake down there. Where's Cowie close, Lake to? Cowie Lake is about uh, 13 kilometers down the road. That's still iced over. Put ups is over here, see? Down this way. Don't take that? Because that's solid, that's that's white. That's right across. Right on down Mill So even my route to the south is blocked too. Yeah. How much yeah. longer do you think? Well it depends on how the weather goes. If you had to guess. You're up for all the time, uh, this I'd time say of year. You got another week for that goes past it, but at least a week. Well, Saku, we got a little care package delivered to us, bud. Officer Blair Barnes of uh, Newfoundland Fisheries and Wildlife came down and dropped off a couple goods for us. Uh, we got some peanut butter and some tuna, beans, canned chicken. Man, I forgot to tell you. He also dropped off a couple cans of coca-cola man what a beauty so I decided to go with four packs of oatmeal two cans of tuna can of beans and chicken a small bit of peanut butter roll of toilet paper and two hot chocolates back there so I uh, left a few tins some oatmeal some pancake mix powdered milk, coffee. Not wanting to indulge, I continued to test ourselves and only chose a few items. If this place wasn't nearby, I never would have got this help. I'm always looking ahead to the future and future trips and situations. I wanted to use what I had planned to take from the beginning and not much more than that. What's on the go? Having a nap are you boy, Sack? Sacky boy, yes a boy. Uh, of course we got uh, sick of that campsite back there and now we're headed down to the raft to load up. Uh, we will head out to the open part of meal peg, pick out a nice campsite. From there we'll have a good vantage point to watch the ice melt in front of us. Ready to retrieve sea ducks in the cold on, North buddy. Atlantic Ocean off Newfoundland, Saku decided to take his first big swim. 
one sec. Good boy. Some boy said. And look at the boat. Look at the frog. Oh, another danger right here is these sticks. Those dry logs. We gotta watch out for them. That's another way to puncture a rat. Now you're coming in or you're swimming again. Come on. Come on. Regardless of his hardy and skilled genetical background, he still needed to be eased in. And with small rattles ahead, I got him aboard the raft. This is nice for a change now to get away from all the buildings and structures and stuff that were up by the old site. We're back in the country now. Ah, this is a really rocky lake. Seems to be one sticking up everywhere. You gotta be really careful. I'm just, uh, I got my polarized glasses on here now and I just try to scout them out before I get too close. Always on guard. Another thing I gotta look out here for is, uh, chunks of ice. Little icebergs. So uh, we had to pick a site out on this peninsula area and uh, it's difficult. Shorelines are pretty rocky and uh, there's also the ice that's getting pushed in from the lake. Uh, it almost made it impossible getting into this little cove that I came into. But we did it. I used the paddle to push some pieces of ice aside and we got in. Uh, worst case scenario, if the ice ends up coming in and uh, we can't get out this out through the way we came uh, in through, we can go back through here. There's a little canal behind me that goes out uh, to a better place. So uh, we just had to get in. It was getting kind of late, 7:30 now. So time to make camp. That's why it's a tricky shoreline. I gotta get a fire going. So uh, I was debating on moving down a little further and find a better site because there wasn't a whole lot in here. But uh, after falling into the drink, uh, I had to go get a fire going. So I scrounged up the best possible spot I could. Uh, I had to do a bit of landscaping in here. That's it, we'll make do. Main thing is, fire's going. Uh, I still gotta get the tent and stuff up before I uh, dry myself, it's not that cold. But uh, once tent's up, I'll change my clothes and uh, we'll be back in business. But uh, whew, I don't know what I was thinking there. Bit of a steep rock, but uh, I figured I'd be able to pick the bag up and go on. Uh, nope, there was other plans in place. What do you think, Zach? Are you laughing at me or what? I seen ya. As much as uh, that fall earlier was a blooper and 
funny to laugh at. Right now. Looking back. Could have been, uh, could have been pretty nasty. Uh, if there was rocks behind me, I could have fell and I hit my head. I could have slipped a different way and rolled my ankle or even broke a bone. Knock on wood. But, uh, you know, you can't take those incidents very lightly out here. I had dodged a bullet and it wouldn't be the last to come our way. But that's just life on the precarious trail. Mistakes are bound to be made. Good boy, Saku. Just like that. The clothes is all pretty much dried out from last night. Only thing that's still a bit saggy is uh, my boots. I mean, they're soggy half time anyway, so. It's the way she goes. Whew. Got a rough little hairdo going this morning. Uh, that stuff happens out here, right? It's all part of the business, but uh, we'll get by. Jeez, morning after uh, setting up a site here on this beautiful little peninsula out on Meal Peg Lake. And, uh, oh man, what a morning here on the rock. Just a beauty out there, but uh, we're gonna make our way now shortly across a bit of land. It's around a kilometer long, and could be a bit of snow, could be, uh, you know, crappy going. But uh, we're gonna go through there and try to get a look at our route across to the southeastern side of Meal Peg. We can see the open lake from here, but we can't see that part. So uh, we'll take a walk over now and a little bit and see what it's all about. After a spirited walk across the peninsula, we went for a paddle later in the evening and then back to camp. The ice over on that side of Meal Peg is still pretty thick. So I'm thinking it's going to be at least another two, three days here. It could be a week, I don't know, but. At the moment, it looks like tomorrow is going to be 17 degrees, so that should do some damage. And we just need enough to get over to the southeast side. So just a portion, God, uh, would be huge. So please, God, uh, that melts away over the next few days. We got, uh, right now, we got 120 to 30 kilometers to Con River. That's just a rough estimate. That should be a good six or seven days uh, to do that and that's you know good long days that's no problem uh, so right now it's just a waiting game with this ice uh, I mean you know I planned this trip for the spring of the year okay and uh, you know I knew what I was getting myself into it's not to say it hasn't been a great time we've still had uh, some unreal experiences and uh, have gotten to, uh, you know, try ourselves out uh, in this time of year, which, you know, people don't do often. So, I mean, yeah, it didn't make it easy on ourselves, but, uh, you know, and it could be a lot more enjoyable trekking uh, in the summer or fall when the country's in better shape, but uh, I don't want that to deter anyone from uh, coming out and trying stuff in the Newfoundland outdoors, because... Any time of the year is an absolute blessing to be out here. For us, and that we happen to, you know, plan the trip for this time, and this is what I had in my mind. Once I get some something like this, an idea, I need to run with it. And that's what I did. And we'll be fine, right? That ice will break. It's only a matter of days now. So we lie still and wait to push to calm. Tired sack? Tired bud? You look tired. You look tired sack. Have a nap bud. Oh you wanna come up here? Yeah? Okay, what's going on buddy? What are you doing?
What do you think, Sack? How long do you think until Neil Peg opens up? What do you think we got? Four, five days at the most? Come on, Sack. Tell me the answer. <laughs> I know you can't tell me, Sack. We'll just hope for the best, buddy. So out here we travel by inflatable pack raft. It inflates in around three minutes with the paddle, patch kit and raft all. Uh, it weighs around nine pounds. It's a great way to get around out here. This bag just catches here and then you push it into the raft via this hosel. You finish it off with a mouthpiece. A uh, very effective way and you don't have to carry around a heavy pump with you. This thing weighs about, uh, geez, half a pound maybe. Additional features of my raft include a spray deck, which can be used to keep dry in rain or rough water. The paddle, which collapses into four easy to carry pieces, is not a burden. And of course, the highly durable material the craft is made from. I also carried an extra inflation bag, just in case. The flooding required to create meal peg drowned many trees. We reap from the destruction and use the easy to gather driftwood. Waiting anxiously, I made tarp cord at a spruce root and tent pegs at a spruce twigs to help pass the time. The loons are at her again. What a noise, man. It's so haunting, it's so soothing. God love the loons. Zach, man, looks like you're having a great itch, bud. How does that feel, bud? Zach, you're all sheltered from the storm, man. What do you think? What's going on out there? Rain. You must like the rain, do you, Zach? Zach, do you like the rain? If I had money enough to 
After being pinned for over a week, the rain, wind and sun had put its final nail in the coffin of ice. The delay was long, and now we had to get going. Drop it. Saku, drop the bone. Good boy. Good boy, Saku. In our final evening, with fishing season now open, we stepped out to the point where we had already bagged a few. Watch out, buddy. Watch out, Sack. It's a nice brook trout, bud. Sack, what do you think, bud? The season's been going well so far. That's a beauty brook trout right there. I'd say it's every bit of uh, 17, 18 inches. More trout out here. This day, the raft will experience its first big action as we head out into the open lake. It's a fine morning here to paddle meal peg and we're excited to finally get going. Days of pulling the sled are long behind us now. That's just a distant memory out on the west coast. Now we paddle across Meal Peg and I can just barely see the horizon on the other end. Just a big body of water. It's special to paddle on this on this lake. There's no doubt.
That's a random little island a good ways out from shore. Covering 315 square kilometers, Meal Peg Reservoir is the second largest body of water on the island of Newfoundland. So we had about 20 kilometers to paddle on Meal Peg here this morning. And we have around 16 in and when we finish off the last uh, four kilometers here we're gonna get to a little piece of land that we're gonna cut over to actually get to another section of Mill Peg but it's it's much easier to go over this little piece of land it's like a hundred meters than paddling seven or eight kilometers around it so that's where we lie anyways we almost got 20 done This is where I need to be. Uh, I'm going to get out of the raft now. We've been in here for four hours. I'll take a little look over now. Uh, it's only like a hundred meters apparently. Uh, the distance from here to the next little part of meal peg there. Could be a little bushwhack though, going through here, no doubt. Best place to land, Sack. This might be all right. There's not too many good ones, especially with all the sharp uh, driftwood around. We don't want to get ourselves in that. All right, bud. Get out. Good boy. Oh. I know my legs are asleep now, buddy. Oh, I can barely stand up here. Legs are cramped. Uh, that's a cool spot though. Little connector here to the next uh, section. Come here, Sack. All right, we got nowhere to go. It's just a bit tangly. We're gonna have a little lunch now, sack bud. Have a little lunch, eh? Yes, bud. That's it. So now we got to uh, unload the raft. Probably a couple trips to get everything over here. And then We'll be on our merry way, paddling again. This will be 45 minutes or so. Definitely. Getting the raft through here is gonna suck. Come on, Sack! This is the gnarly old desolate bush that Newfoundland's known for. If you find yourself in here, good chances are you'll probably get tangled up. Anyways, that's it. We broke through. Just going to be a bit of a, a bit of a bitch bringing everything back. All right, bud. We're sitting on this rock right here for a snack. Load number one. Let's see how many times I uh, fall down here now.
beautiful bugger that was. Come here. You gotta do some work too, buddy. Come on, here. Safu, stay there. Good boy. Been a long time since you had that on, hasn't it? Yes. All right, up. And now we got to load up uh, at this little mud hole of a dock. <laughs> the fun never ends. Boys are ready to go. Saku's bag, sleeping pad, solar charger goes on back. That needs to be on top. Uh, we need power. Everything else goes up front. Thank God we still got a bit of refrigeration out here. I'm uh, just putting some snow in with my trout from last night. That'll be supper this evening. Here we go, Sack. One, two, three, kid. We're back in motion. Let's go. Hold on. Come on, up with Dad. Come on. Good boy. What? What? Hold on. Get your butt down there. Yeah. Oh, I think it was impossible to avoid the mud, wasn't it? Yes, there we go. And the boys are moving. Not a bad drill sack, 45 minutes, good work, bud. Now we got, I think, 10 kilometers or so to our next unload point, and that's gonna be about as far as we get this evening. Uh, from that unloading area, it's around a kilometer max across the steel pond. Looks like we gotta do a bit of upstream work here now. Cutting across so many different systems, upriver travel was inevitable for me and Saku. Stay there, bud. Beautiful up here. Really tucked away too. Sack, what do you think, man? Don't go after him. Hold tight, the SS Newfoundland is now landing. Come on, Sack. Let's go, bud. Hop out. Come on. Good boy. All right, last portage of the day. This one goes in one trip. I'm not going back for any more gear. So everything's on me. Sack has got his bag. And we got around 2K to uh, the steel pond. So we're gonna stay there tonight. Flies are out now, buddy, I tell you that. They're starting to nip at you. Come on, Sack. 
Good boy. We're just about there now. Uh, the reason uh, I kept the raft and the pack inflated as well was because there was a few small gullies uh, along the portage and we paddled across the first one, it was fairly big, but the other two we uh, we walked around. Now we got one more to cross, uh, we're going to do that by raft and we'll be at Steel Pond for this evening. And that's a wrap for today. <laughs> we made it to the side of Steel Pond. There she is out there. That means we don't got to do that uh, two kilometer portage tomorrow. Thank God, that was my plan. And we got a nice little campsite. Fairly, fairly flat. That's about as, uh, as good as you're getting out here. So no complaints from me and uh, the Sackmeister. Hey Sack. Sack. <laughs> All right. That's it for the evening. With camp pitched, I could now sizzle sweet brook trout over the open fire. This, my friends, is heaven on earth. The boys will be flying tomorrow. Hey, Zach. Good boy. What is it, Saku? Such a cool experience last night. Whether it was coyotes or even a bit of wolf in there, they weren't that far away. When you come out here, you don't know what you're going to hear and what you're going to see, and that's a part of the curiosity of it all. Man, so cool. So we're out on Steel Pond here this morning. Just a gorgeous place here. Uh, it's completely unspoiled in these parts. Nothing around. And these are the parts of the trip I love when there's no civilization in sight. And it really gives you that remote feeling that, uh, that I love, the unknown. This is unknown to me, and I'd say unknown to a lot of people. But just, just beauty, just beauty. Every now and then it's nice to stop paddling. And just, just look around. See if you can see any animals, or just look at the, the trees and hills and everything that's out there. It's beautiful. What do you think, Zach? It's pretty. Uh, it's a pretty special place, isn't it? Zach loves it. This section of the trip's been good for Zach too, and I think. Uh, I think for Zach, it was the worst is over. He did his hard work traversing uh, from the west coast to Peter Strides. But raft life for him is just relax all day. He's lounging. That's good. He'll do a bit of walking through the bush now, uh, from time to time, but he put his big shift in and uh, he, uh, he deserves this break right now. Hey buddy.
Wind's picked up a bit here too, so we're going to try to get off the uh, pan for our next portage now, sooner than later. Come on, Tech, let's go, bud. Keep pushing, buddy. You want to make a bit of noise when you're in here. Uh, my visibility isn't too far at the moment. I can only see like uh, 15, 20 yards in front of me at the most. So, very easy to sneak up on uh, black bears. No doubt, and uh, if you make a bit of noise, you'll give them some forewarning. We got our second black bear starting in the trip. Just on this portage here. Sack. 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 Come over here, man. path straight to the next body of water so we better be careful <laughs> there he goes now that's quick <laughs> man they can certainly move though once he wanted to take off then was gone. Just as fast as any caribou or moose. Or faster. Let's go Sack, we better get going. Well we're picking our way through a bit of bush here now. Uh, it's not too thick but it's definitely not uh, paddling on the pond. All I'm doing now is keeping an eye out for, uh, for more bears. Cause they're up around here and I don't got enough free hands and it's too difficult to keep Saku with me especially in this tangly stuff so he's got to go on his own but he's usually pretty good at uh, staying put when we see something this is a caribou trail here now or a moose trail one or the other we'll call it a game trail and if you get on one of these, you might as well stay on it. They take the path of least resistance, and uh, that's the same path I want to take. Just make sure it's going in the right direction. You need to go, that's all. And it's a good way to make life easy for you out here. There's no point in making your own trails if you don't got to. These are well-worn trails that are centuries old. So, I'll add to that legacy, me and Saku. <laughs> Saku and Justin, coming through, let's go. Come on, Sack. Let's go, buddy. Boys are coming. Clear the trail for us. That's a nice game trail there. What a valley, that is it's cut. Feet to a snot, <laughs> what I says. But, uh, in this tight area, uh, I basically keep checking my compass, uh, take bearings every so often. It keeps me on track. Because you know, I don't know where I'm going, I have no idea. Can't see far enough to tell. See, that's a bearing of 52 degrees northeast. And that's where we're headed. This is what happens when the raft gets tangled up in trees behind you. 
you can't bushwhack carrying a raft this way. I had to find a way through here now. We're almost to the to a little stream here now. We gotta follow down. That was a rough go down that brook. It's around two inches of water in the raft here now. Soaking. Sack had to stay in the raft then, and he did a really good job by not jumping out. Sack who jumps out, the raft goes nose, nose deep. It's too much weight up front. Anyway, we're pretty much home free now. Got a big lake to uh, big lake to paddle up. I don't know if it's maybe eight kilometers. Then from there, looks like there's a decent river that we can take. Uh, only looks like a few rapids. Hopefully it's not too bad. I'll set a set our little raft up better than it is now. Uh, I shouldn't have went down that brook like I did. Nothing was tied on properly, but uh, just I'm doing what I don't like to do, and that's rush because pushing for Khan River but uh, at the end of this upcoming lake now there's a there's a river that runs down to Cold Spring Pond so that's where we're going all right Zach let's go bud stay there Zach Water in the old outfit now. I guarantee you that. Last tough spot here, Sack. Which way do we go? Left or right? Left or right? I think left. That's my decision. Oh, right there. Oh, it's a tree, it's a tree. See that tree? I went left, but there's too much going on. That could have been bad for the raft, or even our heads. Oh man. Well, this is why it's a good thing uh, winter's over, Sack. It's not so cold out now. We'll survive. We'll have camp now in a couple hours, bud. So we got a little wet today. I didn't think we took on as much water as we did, but uh, we did.
leak too. Looks like we got a leak here. Sack, we got a leak, bud. Looks like there's three small leaks in total. So, well, that's it for today. Recharged. It's the only thing you can do out here. You can't dwell. You can't dwell on the past. Just drag you down. <laughs> <laughs>